It looks like a high-speed chase. The call's coming in describing a female driver out of control. We had a reckless driver driving on the wrong side of the roadway, hitting mailboxes and driving erratic. When Sergeant Clem pulls up next to the woman, he realizes that she's not a criminal. She actually needs help. She was diaphoretic and she appeared to have a medical situation because she, was, she wasn't paying attention to any of the um, signals we were giving her to stop. As it turns out, the woman is diabetic, and Sergeant Clem realizes that she's quickly approaching traffic that came to a stop. He then pulls around her to get ahead. And I just placed my vehicle behind the others to take the impact of the driver that was. The moment of impact caught on cam. <laughs> Now, when the woman's car crashed into Sergeant Clem's vehicle, the impact was so great that the bumper is crushed in and the trunk no longer even closes. But thankfully, everyone was okay. We got out of the car. She was still uh, incoherent state. Um, we uh, busted one of the rear windows out to unlock the car. Paramedics arrived and the woman was stabilized. Afterwards, Sergeant Clem was taken to the hospital for neck pain. But those close to him say he's a hero. He is a war veteran, he is a police veteran, and he is a veteran of Washington County and he cares about the people he serves. Is it just the one dog? Okay. No, that's fine. You did the right thing in calling. A Roswell police officer's body camera recording what happens when he responds to a 911 call about a dog inside this car outside a movie theater. It was extremely hot. There was no breeze coming in and out of that car. The officer calls fire and rescue for backup. And as they get the dog out, the officer hears a second dog. There's another one. That animal was cowering under a car seat. He was hiding, so they didn't even see that dog at first. A handheld temperature gauge shows just how hot it is inside the car. 167 on the front seat. That's 167 degrees. The dogs were suffering from heat exhaustion. One was suffering from a seizure. Out on the scene, you can see in the video that the dog was clearly in distress. <laughs> As firefighters open a hydrant to try to cool the dogs down, the movie theater pages the dog's owner, who was inside with her children catching a movie on their way through town. The lady was inside watching a movie. Um, I guess she thought it was okay that the windows were cracked. What happened to him? <laughs> he was left in a hot car. Police say it was not okay. She's charged with two counts of animal cruelty. Our boys at Blue out there doing what they can. Watch this dramatic video of more than a dozen officers trying to rescue a driver whose car flipped on its side during a wild police chase. Look at them use all their strength to help free the victim, all while a helicopter camera from above recorded the whole thing. The, the power of blue. They're, they're trying to move it. You know, we don't know exactly what's going on down there. Per, maybe perhaps that person's pinned and they need to move that vehicle to get that person out. They eventually pulled the driver out through the windshield and walked with her to make sure she was okay. There they go, they're gonna put the cuffs on him. At the same time, the suspect who cops say caused the rollover was on the ground getting handcuffed. Police say this man was wanted in connection to a shooting in Los Angeles earlier in the day. He raced through the streets in a white Mercedes with paper plates. Cameras captured smashing into several cars along the way. 
and even got pretty close to hitting a bus. Solid collision. There's a low causing another collision right there. The suspect eventually stopped in the middle of the road and put his hands up to surrender. A modest amount of snow on top of a modest hill caused a massive problem in West Omaha Tuesday. Drivers and helpers alike told us the real hero is this Omaha police officer who preferred to remain nameless. What number of car is this for you, do you think? Well, I, I can't keep track. For two hours, often alone, he pushed cars and directed traffic, foregoing the warmth of his cruiser. I know, he's pretty great. Albuquerque police Where is the subject at? are called out to the Bosque back in May. Right here. Is he still on the tree? Yeah, they nailed, put two nails right here. Okay. A city worker discovered a man, both hands nailed to a tree. As the officer finally finds him. What's going on, man? Still conscious, still breathing. <laughs> and groaning in pain. Baker 225, if we can get 55 over here, he's still on the tree. The officer immediately calls for rescue. Hey, what happened, man? Paramedics are on their way, okay? The man refuses to tell the officer his name. Hey, what's going on, bro? What happened? Do you have an ID on you or something? But finally gives some details about how he ended up here. Is there anybody in the area that could still hurt you? Yeah, two guys. Huh? Two guys. That man, Jose Duran, spoke to News 13 a few days later. He claims two men were sent that day to threaten and scare him after he was involved in an ugly real estate deal, which he says is all laid out in documents. He took out cameras to the exact same spot where more than a dozen first responders you guys need loppers or cut all that? worked for hours. I didn't realize how bad they were until you said that. Is someone going to get the hell again from the rescue? To free him. They're going to help you out. On three, okay? One, two, three. And when they did, hands wrapped, he walked away holding on to firefighters. Dashcam video from Christmas morning shows a state police officer responding to a tense situation at the Coors I-40 interchange. It looks like he's going to jump off the bridge here. Send me some backup, please. He's going to jump. My goal was to get him off that ledge, and uh, uh, and like I said, I. Just keep relying on that training. Officer Dean Carroll, an 11 year veteran on the state police force, says his instinct was to grab the man, but that could mean he'd go over the ledge too. Man, I'm sorry, buddy. Come on. The officer says his training kicked in as the distressed 22 year old man repeatedly threatened to jump. I don't want you to do this. You're going to ruin my Christmas if you do this. I'm going to ruin everybody's I don't want you to ruin anybody's Christmas. I want you to come over here with me. Officer Carroll says the 40 foot drop right into busy traffic was constantly in the back of his mind. Please don't jump. No, I, I deserve that. And that's what I got. Oh boy. Please don't jump. Why? Because it's not worth it. I'll take it to my house for Christmas. The officer kept pleading with the young man, worried about his life and the holiday travelers below. After two minutes that felt a lot longer, the man finally climbed back over the wall, towering over the officer as they walked safely back to his patrol car. I'm just thankful that uh, I was able to, you know, talk to him, rely on my training and, and uh, talk him down. Oh, I just look at it, you know, just help, helping out a young man that needs my help. It was this scene on Thursday that led a nurse and several police officers, including Southport Lieutenant Aaron Allen, to respond. A 20-year-old passenger in that blue BMW managed to get out. The driver, Jason Brown, 
was hanging upside down held by his seatbelt. One officer described him as being hysterical. Despite that, Lieutenant Allen is said to have told Brown to be calm and that help is en route. While Lieutenant Allen was trying to get Brown out of the vehicle, Brown is accused of opening fire on Allen multiple times. One witness says Brown continued to shoot as the officer tried to crawl away. Inside the vehicle, police recovered a weapon, a Springfield XDM9 that looks like this, plus 13 baggies of suspected marijuana. Now, if you want to pay your last respects to Lieutenant Aaron Allen, visitation is set for Friday from 3 to 7 p.m. at Crown Hill Funeral Home. His funeral will then be on Saturday at 11 a.m. at Bankers Life Fieldhouse. I just wish I could do something for them like they did for us. For now, though, all Angie Condor and Chuck Williams can do is offer a hug to these hurting Southport police officers and bring a teddy bear here to remember Lieutenant Aaron Allen, an officer many affectionately called teddy bear. I'm glad I, I got to meet the man. Cantor and Williams will never forget the first time they met Lieutenant Allen, along with the rest of the department's officers. It was just before Christmas 2014. Williams was undergoing treatment for cancer. I had a Christmas tree up, but we had nothing up under it. That all changed one night when Southport police officers, including Lieutenant Allen, showed up at the couple's house. Before I knew it, my house was full. It was full of all the police officers and everything. And like I said, they gave me, me and my family, the best Christmas we ever had. My daughter remembers it. She talks about it all the time. If it wasn't for them, we wouldn't have had a Christmas that year. The department also stepped in and fixed the couple's car. They went out and brought me a car battery so I can get back and forth to my radiation treatments and all that. Today, the couple stood at Lieutenant Allen's police car, remembering the priceless gift of a Christmas he helped to save wishing there was something they could do to change what's happened, knowing, though, they can't. It's kind of hard to do anything, you know, but to be there and, and keep them in your thoughts and prayers.